Uh, students, today we will discuss about refraction at a single curved surface. So, we can have a surface which is uh, plain, we can have also a surface which is curved. So, here we are talking about single curved surface. So, curved means it can be concave or it can be convex. So, what actually we are going to find out is uh, the relations between that refractive indices the and the radius of curvature and the object and image distance. So I consider a curved surface like that. Suppose this is a curved surface and this is the principal axis, this is the pole this surface separates two media. So this side, you have a medium made up of say glass, and this side it is air. You can have any other medium on these two sides, but for the sake of convenience, I will say this is medium number one, and this is medium number two. So these are the two different media having different refractive index. Now we'll consider a point object on the principal axis. The ray has to travel from left to right. So I'll consider a point object over here. So this is the object which is placed over there. From the object, the ray will travel in all possible directions. But I'll consider one ray which is moving like this. And this ray strikes the surface, curved surface at this point. Suppose this point is uh, any point I can call it as uh, A or something like that. Okay, we'll write the name afterwards. Now, <coughs> because this is a curved surface, it's a curvature, so it must have some center. And suppose that this is the center. So this is the center of curvature for this curve. And uh, if I have to draw a normal, then that uh, normal has to pass through this C and the point joining here. So I'll draw a line like that. Like this. This is the normal NC. And uh, <coughs> this is the angle of uh, incidence. And the ray it finds another medium if I assume that this is glass then this is uh, a another medium if it is the glass is placed in air then the this side is uh, air and this side is glass so the ray is moving from a rarer medium towards the denser medium so therefore it will bend towards the normal so instead of going in this direction instead of continue its uh, direction in this way it will bend towards the normal so this is the normal back towards normal so something like that will happen. It will bend towards instead of going this direction, instead of going in this direction, it will bend towards normal. So this is what is the deviation. Now <coughs> it will uh, move in this direction and meet here. And what ray can directly go through this? Uh, and uh, because of refraction, it will meet here. This is your uh, image font. So for image, we have considered two rays. One ray going like this. Suppose this point is your A point, so O, A, I, this is the path followed by the first ray and second ray O, P, I. So these two rays meet here and this point object will have a point image there. Now, <coughs> now our aim is to derive the relations. So now I will say that uh, <coughs> this is the angle that uh, the incident ray makes with the principal axis that uh, angle is alpha, alpha this is alpha and similarly if this is i this will be your uh, r, this is your r that is uh, angle of refraction because refraction is taking place here 
and uh, this angle is uh, um, this angle is beta beta and suppose this angle is here delta this is how the you can uh, there is nothing like you can call this angle as any angle alpha this is beta this is gamma this is delta any angle so just this is i have taken this alpha this is beta and this is i could have taken this is beta and this is also delta no problem with that now <clears throat> now i'll consider uh, a triangle i'll write the uh, interior exterior uh, formula this angle is i and this triangle look at this triangle in this triangle this triangle this is the exterior angle so oac in triangle oac this i is the exterior angle alpha and delta are the interior angle so right i equals to alpha plus delta this i call equation number one now let us see this triangle in triangle c a i c a i this angle these are the interior angles this is the exterior angle delta the exterior angle is r plus beta so from here r equals to delta minus beta now what i have done is basically uh, from this uh, uh, ray coming back and then getting refracted uh, i have different angles so what you should keep in your mind is to have the expression for the angle i that is the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction angle of incidence and angle of refraction in terms of other angles i should be expressed in terms of alpha and delta or beta whatever that comes out to be and r should also be expressed from in terms of some other angles which is alpha and beta and delta here okay so <clears throat> that exactly i've done here because i is now this plus this and r is this plus this why i am doing this because i want to apply snell's law at this point a when you want to apply snell's law at this point a that snell's law will be in the form of sine i and sine r so it will be in the form of i and r so that i has to be replaced in terms of this and r has to be replaced in terms of this if you can replace i in terms of that angles and r in terms of other angles then we will have the chance to write alpha and delta as this divided by this this angle as this divided by this because this is just a rectangle triangle you can think of so i'll write that in the next paper we were going to apply snell's law at point a and rewrite that so applying what will have look at this diagram this medium refractive index me one this medium refractive index me two okay now i suppose this is an error medium because the behavior of the ray is more towards the normal so obviously from this diagram i can write mu2 is greater than mu1 now if i apply this uh, i write uh, sin i upon sin r is uh, mu2 upon mu1 or mu1 into sin of this angle so mu1 sin of this angle is mu2 sin of that angle okay now mu1 
sin i. That i is very small. If that i is very small, then sin i, the sign is dropped. Similarly, sign here is dropped. I are small angles. So I replace sin i as, as i and sin r as only i. If the angle is small, then we need not have to write sign. So I drop the sign. So I write sin i as i and sin r as r. If I do that here, it will become new to r. Now the i and r we got last expressions. Equations that we substitute here and proceed further. You can see here, I got i as alpha plus delta that I will put here. And R I got delta minus beta. Okay. Now <clears throat> I will uh, open the bracket and rearrange things. I'll write this as beta. Okay. So now. The single, I have uh, these two together. I should keep these two angles together because there is delta here, and uh, this should be brought to the side. So I write this is be what alpha plus beta r. This is how we have to rearrange. Now again, uh, the alpha can be thought of as tan alpha. Or alpha can be thought of as the arc length of one radius because this is alpha. So this time I will not go for tan alpha, I will go for this angle is arc length of one radius. So this mu one into alpha is arc length of one radius. You can see this is the alpha, so this is the arc length of one radius is this distance or this distance because this point is very close, so almost this is a straight line. So therefore, I'll write uh, PA upon radius. This is PO. Obviously, if I drop a perpendicular, this distance is neglected. Okay, so I always neglect that distance. But still, so alpha is written as the arc length. This length, it should be like that. But we can take this because this is very, very A is very, very close to P. So this is our approximation, this type of approximations you have to learn in physics, uh, derivations. So this uh, pi, though it is not convincing because the angle is arc length of a radius, this is not arc length. It has to be something like that. And better it has to be something like that. Because this is also not the radius. But this, you have to assume that this point A is very close to P. If I draw this line away very close to P like that, then this is a very straight line or this can be considered as the arc length and these two lines will be now equal so this is exactly what is happening there so <coughs> this alpha can be written as this uh, ap divided by op okay ap by op what is beta similarly if you see beta is uh, ap by pi a P by P I. Delta is uh, A P by P C. Now I will cancel this A P term and new one of an O P. If you think uh, see it properly. This OP is the object distance, PC is the radius of curvature, and PI is the image distance. And this OP is the object distance U, and as with a sign, it is negative because it is lying to the left of the pole or against the ray we are measuring. Plus PI is positive, so we R is also positive. So from here we will get the 
conclusion that uh, for refraction at a single chord surface mu2 by v minus u1 by u is this is the expression we got this expression is basically we have the uh, curve surface this is refractive index mu1 this is refractive index mu2 this radius of curvature is suppose r and uh, the object is placed uh, somewhere here so this is object distance and this is somewhere here the image is formed this is image distance so basically what we have done is the relations among these things and that is the answer to this question so this and we must take note that whenever we are going to use this expression of mu2 upon v minus mu1 upon u equals to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r we have to use sign conventions we have to use this all these details are all these values in this formula they are to be used or put in the expressions with proper sign with proper sign we have to use this in numericals so in numericals we have to use proper sign conventions then use the formula okay thank you